Did you know in 2009 there were recorded over 44 million telegraph poles in the United States? Now, of course, the traditional phone network, the public switch telephone network, has been around, well, its foundation was like 150 years ago, and it's grown from there to be a global network that stretches all over the world, uh, under sea cables, over mountains, and everything. Now, of course, today we're moving away quite rapidly from the traditional phone network to voice over IP. Basically, we're using the internet. So in the past, it would have been your phone cable that was the most important cable that came to your house. Nowadays, it's your internet cable. And then over that internet cable, not only will you access websites and, and YouTube and so on, you'll also have a phone service and uh, you might stream Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever. So really, it's the internet that has become the backbone rather than a public switch telephone network. Now, what I want to talk about today is having a private branch exchange uh, for your business. What is that basically? That's a technical term. What that basically means is someone can ring your business and then you've got 10, 20, 700, whatever phones inside your business, each one with an extension number, and you can call and you can get connected to individuals or to the support department or the sales department or whatever. And nowadays, we don't do that with physical phone lines and you know you need 20 phone lines running to your building. We do it all virtually. And I'm going to be looking in particular at a company called 3CX, who are also the sponsors of today's video. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So with voice over IP, you can have voice connections anywhere in the world over the internet. And there's also a service which is known as SIP, SIP trunking, which allows us to connect the more traditional phone networks with a phone number and then get that connected through to a uh, kind of your own private exchange, which you might be running in your business. So if you have a small business, even a startup, anything more than two, three people, then really you're going to want to not give out your mobile or your cell numbers all the time. You want a brand, you want a phone number, you want people to ring that, and then you can do whatever you want with that number internally direct the people to where they need to go. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at how you set that up using 3CX, which is a way of having a PBX virtually hosted for you on 3CX's uh, servers. And I'm also gonna be making some phone calls, two phones in my hands, and I'm gonna ring myself uh, to show you how this works all over the internet rather than using traditional physical phone lines we've done in the past. Okay, let's get cracking. Okay, so here we are on the 3CX website. Signing up for the service is really, really easy. Here on the homepage, you've got try it for free. You can use your Google account or an email address with a password. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna type in my name. So I am, of course, Gary Sims. And then we're going to use an email address, which I won't show you, of course. So a verification code has been sent to my email address which I now need to type in. Okay, so we need to complete the account setup. Notice here that I have typed in a strong password. Now there are different plans available. I want hosted, which means it all happens over on 3CX's stuff. So here is a hosted plan up to 750 users and you get a two month free trial for that. Okay, now you need to pick a fully qualified domain name. So there's a list here of the different domain names. You just pick one according to your country. So I'm just gonna go down here and use the United Kingdom one. And in the front here, I'm gonna just put Gary Sims. Now you have to pick how many extension digits you want. This is important because you can't really change it. So of course, traditionally it's three extension digits. If you know you're only gonna be a small number of people in your business, you could go with two. I'm gonna stick with three. That does give up to be a thousand employees. So that's pretty good. Now at this point, it will go ahead and create everything it needs over on the 3CX servers. Basically, your hosted um, PBX over there does take a few minutes. It's generally quicker than the eight, nine minutes they're showing here, but we'll come back to this when it's finished. Okay, so that completed, and it was actually just slightly quicker than the timer was showing there. Gives you the details that you need to log in. So now we can go ahead and log in.
Now, one of the first things it shows you is uh, how to get hold of the apps for, for example, Android and for iOS and for Windows itself. And there's a QR code that you need to scan so that you can actually, uh, it knows who you are and connects you to the right account. We will come back to this, but that does come up when you first uh, go in. So we'll just uh, get rid of that for the moment. Okay, so here we are. And this is basically my personal uh, account now as a user of the system. Uh, and so, for example, here I can set my status. I am here, I'm not here. I can make a phone call and dial another user. We don't have any other users at the moment, but that's the kind of thing you can do from here. You can start uh, chats. You can start video conferencing. We'll dive into some of these in a minute. You can see all the past calls that I've had. Lots of stuff you can do here. There's also an admin panel. So you click down here on the admin panel and I'm getting access to this because I'm the one that created the account. Uh, a normal user wouldn't have access to this. And from here, you can create other users. So let's go in here and add a user. So we're going to add a few more users. So then we can kind of call ourselves, you know. So, okay, so of course, we're going to have John Smith, uh, and then we would put in his uh, email address, john.smith at example.com. You'd put in the name of your business or whatever email address he's got. That's a personal email address or his, um, his uh, company email address. Now you can define direct numbers here. We'll talk more about that in a moment so that when someone rings in, it gets through directly to him. But at the moment, uh, John Smith is on extension uh, 101. Now I'm going to turn off uh, 2FA, two-factor authentication for the moment. Don't need that for this test system. However, you would probably want to do that. Okay, so there's John Smith, extension 101. Let's just save that. Okay, let's add a third user now, Jane Doe. Now, when you do have a proper email address in there, not the ones I've put in, then the user will be sent, for example, their login details along with the uh, QR code that they need to scan to activate their uh, mobile app. Okay, so as we see here, I've now got three users. Now, none of them are activated. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, download on two separate phones uh, the mobile app, and I'm going to activate John Smith and Jane Doe. Here is the app running on a different uh, dev on my other device. So I'm going to say scan QR code, allow it to do that. And then I go over here and scan this code and that'll be it, it activates it. Now, as I said, all that does actually happen uh, in an email that gets sent. So that's all easy. In this case, I'm just using the admin panel to get access to that code, but it's all the same stuff. Okay, as you see now, Jane Doe and John Smith are both active. They've got little green lights because I've got two phones configured. I want to do this laptop as well that I'm using. You go down here to apps. These are all the different apps you can get. Let's get the Windows app. Okay, get it from Microsoft. Okay, so that's downloaded. It says once installed, provision the app using the provision button, which is what we'll do. Yes, open that. Okay, and there we go. Uh, allow that. Yes. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take one of the phones here and I'm going to dial extension 100 because that's the, uh, the main one and ring that. And as we can see now, it's actually an incoming call is coming from uh, Jane Doe. We'll answer. There are probably lots of echo if we do this now. Okay, so there we are. We're connected just by dialing uh, 100. And I can also do the same dialing from one to the other. So if we dial 101... We can see here there is an incoming call. So notice I'm not ringing their mobile number. I'm not ringing any kind of other number, just the extension number that's been set up inside of 3CX. Okay, we're back in the admin panel here. Now there's obviously lots that you can configure and play around with here. Look, for example, there's departments, there's office hours, all kinds of interesting things. But one interesting thing is on call handling is you can set up a ring group. So let's say that John Smith and Jane Doe were part of some kind of support team. OK, so I, if I can set up an, a virtual extension number, 800, OK, and let's call it uh, support. OK, and what this one does is it will it will hunt around. There's a prioritized hunt. You can ring everybody different ways of setting up 20 seconds uh, ring time. Let's just for the sake of this per demo, let's just drop that down to five seconds, which probably isn't very practical, but it'll help us here in the demo. After five seconds, it will hunt to the next phone. Now, what we do is go over to the users here and we add some users. So let's add in John Smith. Let's add in Jane, uh, Jane Doe. Okay, let's save that. So now if you dial 800, it will ring the first phone in the group. If they don't answer, it will ring the second phone and so on. Let's give that a try. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and dial 800. And then what you can see here is ringing the first phone. Because I'm trying to desperately get hold of someone in support. I really want someone to help me. Okay, if that didn't work after five seconds, I've now got the other phone ringing. Obviously, you would make it 20 seconds or 30 seconds. But there you go. I can also hold online meetings. So I can go to Meet. And this is very similar to many of the popular video conferencing setups. Basically, I start a meeting, uses the webcam if I've got that set up on my laptop. I can send a link, I can do email, I can send it by a QR code, I can schedule it, there's calendaring, all that kind of stuff, so that we don't ever have to leave the 3CX system for doing all of our business together. Uh, whether the team is remote, whether you're all sitting in the same building, you can all get together on online call. Now, another interesting thing is this is, isn't just for people inside of your business. You want to talk to the outside world. So there's a couple of things here. First of all, let's see how you can add a live chat to your website. So maybe you do have a support uh, system and you want people to, be able to go onto your website and talk directly to the support engineers, however you want to set it up. So if we go here, for example, and let's just say none, don't want the visitor to type in any information. Again, just for the sake of this demo, you can do it however you want. GaryExplains.com. I think I need to put in HTTP s there okay and what i want is to be able to uh, set up something on my website so i get through to you know john or jane to talk on on the support team so i need to set the destination who do i want it to go to well i could use 800 support as we've been setting up let's just go through to john smith he can answer uh, these support calls for us now okay and let's save that and now if we click on this link here they give us we can actually try it here for our, ourselves so if I say, yes, I want to chat, and I can just type in hi, then we can see that it comes through here on uh, John's uh, phone and he can start to deal with the uh, ca how can I help? Okay, and he can start to deal with the support call. Obviously, you'll want to configure that as your business. The point, of course, is that there's so many options so that you can make sure that your customers and your staff are able to communicate as they should. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's a way of connecting a traditional phone network with a phone number to a voice over IP system to a hosted PBX. And you do that with a SIP provider. Someone that offers this SIP it's a voice over IP protocol. They offer services called SIP trunking and SIP channels. Trunking basically means a bunch of connections that can come through to your PBX. Now, 36 isn't a SIP provider because the SIP providers happen all over the world. Do you want a number in New York? Do you want a number in London? Do you want a number wherever in the world that you are? And so you use a local SIP provider. Now, I've signed up with a SIP provider in the USA and I'm going to show you how you take the phone numbers that you get from that SIP provider and connect them through to your uh, hosted uh, PBX so that an outside call can come through and then be used anywhere inside of your company. Okay, so connecting to a SIP provider is really easy. You go here to Voices and Chat and then you click on Add Trunk. Now I'm using Flow Route, Flow Route. So the first thing you do here is select the country, and that's an American company. Okay, and I've bought two dedicated numbers from them. So I click on here on US. And then I click here on, these are an example of all the different services that are supported. I click on Flow Route. Now Flow Route gives me a, a username and a password, which I'm gonna put in here. Then I need to put in one of the two numbers that I've bought to be the main trunk number. So that's what I'm gonna put in there. So that's the number that I've got from Flow Route. Uh, it's a SIP number, which means it's the interface, as I explained, between a traditional phone network and a voice over IP one. Okay, I hit save and then that should automatically uh, go ahead and it will, in the background, make sure it can authenticate and connect to uh, flow route. Now, another thing I can do in here is if I now go to direct numbers, I can see here that that's the na main number and it's routing through to extension 100, which is the Gary Sims account. Now I can change that to route to anywhere I want to. Okay, so, and also in here, the default call handling, I can set what happens when the office is closed, go to a voice box uh, and so on. What I actually want to do, I've set up a digital receptionist, so I want it to go through to a receptionist 
and that allows for example uh, you can you know leave messages you can divert to different extension numbers and all that kind of thing and I'll show that in action uh, in a minute when I'm uh, when I've got that running so that's set that up now to go through so if we go back to the uh, direct numbers we can see that the main number will go through to a digital receptionist though I do have a second number as I said by the way notice it's now gone green because it's been able to connect to flow route and it's actually connected it all up and uh, it's all working okay so I've gone to the Jane Doe number that's extension 102 that we were using a little earlier and now here in assigned direct numbers I want to make sure that second number is directly assigned there and now if we go back to the direct numbers part of the trunk uh, where it had flow route we can see that the second number is now directed to Jane uh, Doe so if they call the first number that I've got from flow route it will get through to the digital receptionist I can direct dial now through to Jane Doe by using the second number so now you have the options of using a main number with an extension or a direct number and you might want some direct numbers for some of the big departments you know sales or technical support or or whatever and then you can use extension numbers for other things so that's all now set up so let's give it a try as a demo okay so here on the right hand side I've got a normal phone connected to my mobile network and I'm going to ring the uh, Jane Doe number so let's just tap on that and as we can see now the call is being ringing here directly on Jane Doe's number so I've done a direct call for that number to Jane Doe now the other thing I can do is call the digital receptionist and let's hear the response actually a recording that I've made let's put it on speakerphone Okay, and so what I can do now is I could just dial Jane Doe again, 102, and that will get me through to that other extension. There we go, it's working again. Okay, so there we go, how to have a virtually hosted PBX using 3CX. It's cost effective and it's scalable. You don't need to keep having extra phone lines, physical phone lines connected to whatever physical uh, properties that you have. Now do check out the links in the description below for how you can start a free trial using 3CX. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.